You know what? Let us bring a brand voice uh, to the table on what was the COVID-19's uh, impact on the industry. Um, why not? And I know where you are uh, leading um, your interview with uh, David Mamulashvili, CEO of Silknet, the industry that suddenly found itself into the heart of COVID-related changes and the global turn to online life, basically. Yeah. You're so right uh, on that. And let's watch the interview together with David Mamulashvili, the CEO of Silknet. <laughs> Before we move on the detailed early sum up, can you briefly overview how the company handled the year 2020? How did Silknet manage to maintain sustainability, follow development strategy and most importantly obtain a 200% growth in demand, especially the internet? This year was challenging tourism. A driving force of Georgia economy has collapsed. All restaurants and hotels stopped working. This caused an extensive drop in the internet and mobile services, which surprised us. This was one of the first problems we had to face. Afterward, a complete lockdown was announced. We switched to a lifestyle that has led people across all sectors to work from home. This led to a 200-250% increase in network load in the internet and telecommunications sector. We knew we had a quality, lively superior network, but there were some grounds for our worries. This was the central question. Would the equipment be enough to handle the load created during this period? Our equipment comes from the biggest brands worldwide. Thankfully, this equipment has proven the basis of its high cost. The population of Georgia has not faced any large-scale problems. We have successfully overcome all the obstacles. This is proven by the regulator's GNCC annual report. The crisis has posed many challenges for the leader of a huge telecommunications company. I am particularly interested in the operations process. Beyond the technical part, the biggest challenge is to maintain a key operational performance. What was the process of preserving these aspects? Our company was the first and only non-banking entity that managed to enter the European foreign exchange market and attract 200 million euro bonds. We merged two huge companies, Silknet and Geocell. These processes have made us even stronger but even more sensitive to currency risks. There are two important factors to consider. We know that partnerships with vendors worldwide are linked to monetary processes. All our products are sold in local currencies. The Lari has depreciated by about 25% against the dollar over the last two years. You can imagine how difficult the situation is for the company. One of our requests to the regulator was and still is to make adjustments based on the depreciation rate. We have been negotiating with the regulator for a long time, but we have not yet had any results. As a review of the year 2020, what achievements can you highlight from the strategic development plan of Silknet beyond maintaining sustainability? We made a test laboratory, Gigabit LT 4.9, from Freedom Square to Bagebi. By example of the central district, we wanted to show the population would now have access to different and effective new internet speed. I soon received confirmation that this initiative worked. It was so effective that no one wanted to oppose it. I can proudly say that this project is complete. Up to 400 satellites have already been installed throughout Georgia. We look forward to the wide success of this initiative. 
Another bright spot of this year was bringing Euronews to Georgia. Other initiatives that didn't stop are also worth mentioning. Bringing Euronews to Georgia is a part of our shareholders and our entire team's vision to create a neutral space that is free and independent. This is guaranteed by the brand itself and Euronews Georgia curators, who are EU representatives. We had to hire a 200 seat charter plane and bring in seven technicians to launch the project on time in May 2020. Georgi Ramishvili made this commitment and we successfully fulfilled this obligation. Euronews is working strongly and I believe that over time the success of this project will increase. Another important initiative to mention is Georgian Ski Federation, which we have been financing for over 10 years. All the activities connected to skiing are essential for the Georgian economy and culture. We need to understand how important this sector is for the development of winter tourism. This is the reason we are actively supporting this field. I also have to highlight Georgi Ramishvili's decision to hold the Tsinandali festival despite the epidemiological reality. The aim was to bring in world-class performers and unite them with young artists who got once in a lifetime opportunity to receive master classes. Tsinandali festival is crucial for the advancement of values and is extremely important for our country's development. When it comes to operational processes, including upcoming initiatives of 2021, we must talk about the IT transformation plan. What are the company's vision and action plan in this regard? This is the main subject, matter that I think about the most. This is the current reality. 200 people from China are involved. The same number from Georgia. In total, 400, 500 IT professionals are involved in the step-by-step transition from the old program to the new program. The process includes the transformation of eight modules, mobile system, reporting system, planning, technical budgets and more were currently creating so-called new constitution of the company and new operational script. By the time we complete the IT transformation, this company will become a true 21st century company. We are BMG. Follow and subscribe for business and economics news.